We're using Universe Sandbox Squared, a program available on Steam for a super reasonable price. We're looking at a three-dimensional representation of the solar system, and it's running at the rate of, eh, let's say, 14 days per second. So we've accelerated time quite a bit. We can see the solar system uh, represented in its traditional way with the sun at the center. The reason for this is that the sun contains more than 99% of the mass of the solar system. Therefore, it makes sense to represent the solar system as centered on the sun because it determines the movements of everything around it. Notice how all the planets, Earth, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Here's the asteroid Ceres. Here is Eugenia, or e Eunomia, right there. Each one of these moving dots has a name. They're real objects being modeled. There are thousands and thousands of solar system objects being rendered in their real positions at the real times, and there's the dates right down there, in, solar so in Universe Sandbox Squared. But you know what? A post the other day told me that although this is a way of representing the solar system, it is arbitrary. We can pick any location on the entire simulation and make it the center of the universe, stop it, and represent everything else in its motion in relation to that object. Let's pick such an arbitrary object. We'll pick the planet Earth. Right click the Earth, select Actions, go down to the bottom, and we can set the Earth as the center of the universe. Let's do that and watch how everything that makes sense about the solar system promptly falls apart. There's the Earth right there. Let's sum. Let's stop. Let's center the Earth here. Now we zero the velocity, it's going to crash into the sun. Okay, we have it stopped. There we go. Now the sun, of course, in the flat Earth, follows a path around the Earth. Of course, the Earth is not a plane here. This is the regular solar system with objects demonstrated as they are, but as they would look if the Earth were the center of the solar system. The Sun goes a logical path around the Earth in a perfect circle, of course, because that's a mirror image of the Earth making a perfect circle around the Sun. But look at all these other planets. See that loop Mercury just did? Why is Mercury making that loop? Does it make any sense? Can you come up with any reasoning of why it should do this? Can you predict where it will be? Here's Venus doing the exact same thing. See Venus charging toward the Earth. Oh, Venus decides it can't get any closer and it goes away from the Earth. What makes Venus go away from the Earth like that? Isn't that interesting? Well, let's take Mars. Look at that. Mars making a loop out there for no reason whatsoever. What, is, what about the Earth is making Mars do a loop? Is there any way you can write any equations that predict this movement? Now, Universe Sandbox Squared is using actual calculations of the solar system based on the Sun being the center of the solar system, and it translates them into a system where the Earth is the center. So it's really cheating to do this because there's no mathematical way to make this stuff happen the way it is. Here's two asteroids. Look at this. Come close to the Earth. Do a loop! Earth has come some kind of a force field, maybe? I'm not quite sure. Look at this. Jupiter just got a loop. Did a loop out there. So much for the force field theory. There we go. Loop. What's the reason for this? The asteroid Vesta. The asteroid Ceres. All doing the same thing. Here's all these asteroids going back and forth like specks of water in a 
in a piece of stagnant water that just goes back and forth and back and forth for no particular reason. What we've done is we've taken a system that makes sense and turned it into utter chaos. Nobody on Earth can explain why this would be true. And why when we do this and say, there's 99% of the mass right there. Let's, perhaps we'll make that huge mass the one that defines the motion in the solar system. And we now restore the solar system to something that makes sense, something that can be calculated, something that can be predicted, something that can be used to send spacecraft through it as we really do. And there we go, proof that the flat earth cultists are again out to lunch.